Welcome back to the LCS, where Counter Logic Gaming looks to take down the Golden Guardians. I am Julian, Pastry Time Car, and if you're willing to bring Captain a flower, I think it's only fair you bring my co caster a nice steak. After all, it's Sam <laughs> Kobe Hartman Kanzler. Well played, well played. <laughs> Alright, well despite what was a relatively strong start for the Golden Guardians, the team is losing hold of what was looking like a sure spot in the top six. Yeah, I mean they're definitely a team with very high aspirations, especially considering how summer started for them. Really successful start, but they've been trying to switch something up here in the bottom lane, especially bringing in FBI and Huhi Av. They started to slide down the standings. We'll see if they can actually bring that some success here today versus CLG. Well, we'll see what happens here in the draft, but on the other side, Huhi will be looking to pick up a win versus his former squad, Counter Logic Gaming, who had a game riddled with missed executions yesterday. Yeah, specifically yesterday for CLG, uh, Wiggly as well on the Elise, they did have a rough day, especially for the early game plan. I actually like the early game plan, you know, Renekton and Elise try and dive topside and get control there, but they were unable to execute on that game plan, and that cost them uh, towards the later stages of the game. See where they're looking for this champ select though. Lux, Sichuani, Karma, and Yumi, the first four bands, as Silas rounds out the last band there for CLG. Have already demonstrated the power of Silas Jungle themselves, and Contracts did play it yesterday despite the loss there for GGS. Yeah, not willing to first pick it and risk the Golden Guardians on the backswing here. Let's see what rounds it out with the Yumi, Karma, possible continuation of bottom lane focus. We've still seen teams both ban and play the Sona bottom lanes. That's definitely a possibility. I think the bottom lanes have been incredibly important for both of these teams. It won't be the Sona, but it is another one of the supports taking away the Tom Kench, which CLG did use yesterday. Um, not as effectively, though, with that Ezreal Tom Kench bottom lane trying to play safe and uh, you know, avoid a lot of conflict. I think that CLG's bottom lane actually looks better when Biofrost is on a more aggressive pick. Yeah, it feels like when they're trying to take over the landing phase, they do look a little better. Jarvan, though, the first pick here for CLG, taken for the squad by Ruin, but likely going to Wiggly there in the jungle. Yeah, Jarvan really rising back up. Uh, some feel-good changes to the EQ combo were made. It's a bit smoother now and easier to pull off. Kiana, possible attack damage assassin, always floating around here. Everybody likes to get another look at a new champion, but not going to be the case quite yet. Ooh, still some aggression from the jungle here. Rakan there, down for Kuki, and Lee Sin there for contract. Contract. for certainly. Yeah, the contracts Lee Sin being thrown down early into the Jarvan here. Definitely excited what early game action he can actually create with this because one of the problems for contracts has been getting out of uh, dangerous situations, at least in a very mobile champion. So they definitely have a lot of options here early on for Golden Guardians. And with the Tom Kench ban, that is Zaya and Thresh. So they'll break up Zaya Rakan. That means that Golden Guardians will pick up Ezreal there for FBI. And all of a sudden we're into phase two of bans. And the Ezreal is going to be the one to complement the Rakan rather than the Zaya here picked up uh, for FBI, Ezreal definitely one of the champions that he has put a lot of time in on and has been known for in the past. It's also one that can allow Rakan to go for roam plays. One of the biggest things I love to see when you have champions like Rakan is, you know, opening up possibilities for that support player to leave and make plays on the mid lane or make plays with the jungler. A Rakan Lee Sin combination is such an insanely threatening gank squad that if you don't control vision through the river, your mid laner constantly has to be worried about those bottom rounds and your jungler for invades as well. I think if there's ever a player who we're really looking to transition from wrong one role to another but still keep his style intact, it is certainly Huhi. So has been a pretty big playmaker for the few games he's played on the main stage at least so far. We'll see if he can in fact get out of that bottom lane and make an impact with the early pick Rakan. Phase two though is almost done as far as bands go. Nico and Azir both receiving their takeaways and we'll see if Corky Where's joins the Corky? Them, yep. is Jace for Corky GTA. better follow or else that one's gonna get picked up. Uh, yeah, some of, the, meanwhile, the Golden Guardians bands here are targeted at some of the lane bullies. The Jace and the Nico, both very powerful top lane lane bullies. Uh, possibly flex around here. Let's see if CLG do follow this one up. PoE thinking his thing's over. PoE definitely has quite a few control mages to play in the mid lane, not just the standard Azir and Corky. So I think banning these out doesn't hurt him as much, and CLG can still play a longer range, you know, AP threat from the mid lane with no problem. Yeah, we'll see what Golden Guardians want to take here, though, as Corky was banned away. That would have been the obvious choice for Froggen there in mid. But still time ticking down. Looks like they want to counterpick for Froggen if they do take something like Aatrox here for Haunter. 
But lots of chatter about the pick. We'll eventually be locked in, though. All right. Can we see something a bit spicier for the counter pick into Aatrox? High mobility <laughs> Fiora type of stuff. But definitely a who he shout out here. I mean, yes, who he was most recently on 100 Thieves, but most people associate him with CLG because he spent so much time as the CLG mid laner and Aurelian Soul, the iconic champion there. One of the ones that, as you're alluding to earlier, he roams so often, especially down to that bottom lane. Well, no spice. I'm sorry, Kobe. Just a cannon in the top lane instead ah, for Ruin. I wanted some, like, Fiora action or something. Not going to be the case, though, yeah. Very standard pick here, the cannon into the Aatrox, trying to bully him early, try and delay the power spikes for Aatrox to become that huge team fighting power. <laughs> and power of evil locks into LeBlanc. It's going to be an assassin mid lane, so maybe we'll have Wiggly more attention towards mid lane. Jarvan LeBlanc is incredibly threatening no matter what Froggen decides here. Yeah, we'll see what Froggen does want to take here because has given himself the choice of matchup after PoE was forced to show a pick. And looks like gonna keep it really safe. This is kind of a throwback matchup. Lissandra here for Froggen in the mid lane. Lissandra has both a travel ability, uh, not really a dash with the claw, but uh, definitely some safety there for getting ganked, as well as the self immunity with the ultimate. So we'll see how well he can actually control the minion wave. Uh, the LeBlanc now a little bit less control over damage to minions early on in the game. And Power of Evil, I think, should be playing the LeBlanc fairly offensively, but you do have to worry about LeBlanc CC. Point and click is one of the best answers to LeBlanc later in the game, but also setting it up for the Lee Sin for contracts. I think this last pick for Golden Guardians actually goes a fairly long way in evening up a little bit that 2v2 mid. I would still give the advantage over to LeBlanc Jarvan, though. Certainly have to agree. In general, I think CLG, you know, changing modes a little bit here, picking a lot more aggressively this bottom lane, much more what we've seen from them as far as wanting to dominate the lane and be more aggressive. Biofrost Thresh is the champion we've seen from him time and time again when he first entered the league about a year and a half ago. But I think CLG decided, you know what? Sitting back and scaling, not really our thing. And they lost yesterday. So they're going to try and take it to GGS here. Yeah, playmaking in the hands of Biofrost is definitely a huge component to CLG's success. And Thresh is definitely the iconic playmaking support champion. See if they can pull it out effectively here. You can try and get your flays off on Rakan. Throw down some of the chains as well and look for some picks. Let's get onto the rift. Certainly so. CLG versus Golden Guardians, a very important game for both these sides. For CLG, they're trying to stay towards the top two of the standings here. They would tie second, I believe, with a win here. And for Golden Guardians, they're sitting in six, but not that securely, given that a win here would only put them back up to 500 after such a strong start to the season. So much room in the standings still, uh, with all the teams really closely battling it. CLG actually heading out for a level one on the bottom side. FBI will see them. Flash hook, good arcane shift over the wall. Yeah, he leveled that one up and immediately is able to get out. No summoner spell. I. It's kind of a, a risky choice, but personally in that situation, I like taking the risk of going for the dodge and just uh, not leveling up the ability even and, and going for the you know movement up the river. But that is really risky. And uh, he just goes for the super safe play. Level up the arcane shift, not a huge cost to that at all. And ensures that he gets out in time. Biofrost does not get the catch. At least though, some deep vision for CLG on the blue side of the Golden Guardian's jungle. We can see, of course, that Contrax is starting on his left for now. And uh, CLG will have most of that information as well with the vision they've put down. I wonder if, especially after that early play, you know, maybe Contrax on this Lee Sin heads immediately to the bottom side of the map. Because Balfrost with an aggressive flash there, uh, you know, trying to make a big play for the team is definitely going to be vulnerable on Thresh. And that's a very, very targetable area uh, early on in the game. So we'll see if, you know, an Ezreal Rakan lane, decent setup there. Contracts can make a route bottom. Problem would be, look at these wards that CLG uh, were able to get in. Actually, we just had a toggle, so we can't see the wards anymore. But uh, Wiggly's heading right up there, and Contracts just passed over the two wards I was talking about, leading right up to the blue buff. So Wiggly knows Contracts is in the area, and they're going for the 1v1 at the blue. Good timing over here from Contracts, just kind of waiting it out. Who he going to roam over? FBI going to do the same. Mid laners can't look to join right now, but Contracts does want to secure this buff for himself. Might just be a smite fight for it. Who's going to claim it? Contracts does get the smite down. 
bit of extra damage from Lee Sin Q helping out there. Yeah, really good combination there. You always want to combo uh, your Q, second Q landing with your smite, and he's able to get it. We just saw the ward die that I was talking about, by the way. That was in Fog of War. It's right there that uh, CLG were able to get when they went for the invade. That set up the whole possible play, but in the end, doesn't actually get anything out of it. This contract secures the blue, and it delays some time in Wiggly's jungle. Jarvan has to go all the way back across the map to his own territory here. Uh, so he's going to be a little bit delayed as contracts now control over the bottom side. And we mentioned Thresh no Flash. Bilefrost should be the target here. So even after the invade, contracts keeps up his vision on the target. Bilefrost also still level one. See if who he can actually get in there. Yeah. I imagine Contrax is sitting in the brush right now, just holding out for a bit of Fog of War. Here he comes. On Bifrost he goes. He's going to tag him, gets the Q down. Does get hooked on the other end of it. Who he going to give him a shield, though? Not in tower range, and Contrax going to be just fine. All right. That is no flashes now for the CLG bottom lane. See if there's any sort of repeat pressure. But FBI and Huhi in this game are being set up for success. Most definitely. They had the one super good game where Huhi was on Lux. Uh, he had full kill participation for the entire game uh, and uh, one of the highest damage outputs as well. However, aside from that game, it, there hasn't really been super standout ones for the bottom lane switch. And this may be their chance to really put their stamp on it. Contracts is still bottom. Yeah, looking for these Krogs here. Biofrost is going to tag him, but you can see Froggen cheating down to that side of the map. So Contracts will have Dominion over these Krugs, but of course, Wiggly moving up to do the same. So Jungler should be even as far as total camps go. You can see this CS is reflective of that. And maybe Haunts is the one now that has to start worrying, getting pushed in, although Contracts did go back down the bottom, but just get some poke and not much else. And Styx is still ahead in CS, by the way. Even with all this attention bottom and all the summoners being blown, uh, Styx A doing a good job still keeping focus on last hitting. Meanwhile, Golden Gardner's dropping quite a few here when they go for these offensive plays. You know, sometimes uh, when you're going for that gank, a couple minions are dying while you attempt to get the enemies. There they go, though. On to Styx A. FBI does find the proc there on the W, but Biofrost with a pretty quick lantern to give him a shield, mitigate some of that follow up damage. Meanwhile, if we check in on the top side of the map, because Contracts has constantly been bottom side, that gives you free reign on the top side. Kennen, the classic counter pickup here into Aatrox. He's abusing the range discrepancy very well, pushing the Aatrox into the tower. Uh, you get your CS lead here by denying some of them to the tower, and then he can get a little bit of tower damage and whittle down on the plate as well. Also doing what he can, gets most of those minions under the turret, but still down almost two waves worth of minions sitting at an 11 difference right now. Kuhi, though, continuing to try and be aggressive, but does not land the knock up there onto Biofrost. And regardless of performance, as you said, it's been fairly mixed from the GGS duo lane swap. They have always played aggressive, and this Ooh. time they've brought some friends. Yeah, they want to make those flashes worth it. No ultis here. TP already getting used by CLG. Sticks in trouble. Contract's getting locked up for a while, but the first blood over to Frog and get a proc to Lissandra. Pass it. Biofrost gonna maybe make it. See you later. Forced to flash away, but it is a trade. The CLG do TP down for one. Woo, yeah. Teleport is used, so one extra summoner spell. On the top side, Rune gets haunts are very low as well. He's probably gonna have to use his teleport. PoE. Looked for something, did tag Froggen with the chain, but not able to latch as Wiggly also down there to try and get a counter kill. Will force the TP back from Haunter here in top lane, as you mentioned. So Ruin gonna go back, spend his gold, and continue to lean on that advantage he's built. All right, Haunter does hit level six there, so he's gonna be a bit safer. Let's take another look at the dive as it starts out on the bottom side. As soon as they see them, they immediately start channeling a teleport. Bilefrost lands that hook to delay the engage, and then Contrax is left under the tower. Froggen kills off Stixe. Uh, Power of Evil, though, getting the counter kill there as he teleports in onto Contrax. Yep. Getting the one for one. So both mid laners pick up some extra gold there. You can see Power of Evil has that blasting one. Nice sent early. And now Froggen looks like Protobelt first here with the Hexdeck Revolver picked up. Not too surprising as far as early itemization goes, but kind of, I guess, the thing we might have expected where one of the lanes is being focused, this time it's bottom lane. Although, as I say, that contracts, of course, is top lane, trying to help but Haunter as the way it builds. Yeah, contracts is going turbo on these ganks right now. He's still level four, constantly looking to uh, make offensive plays at the lanes. He is falling a bit behind in experience in CS in the jungle, and Wiggly attention on the dragon here will pick up a objective for himself as Contracts tries to catch back up by farming Krugs. 
Yep. It's going to be Cloud Drake over to CLG. PoE even roams down with a bit of extra time and takes down the control ward there in the pixel. Frogan actually up pretty significantly in CS. I wonder if that was just due to the roam that happened, but you can see that both mid laners are starting to be a lot more proactive. It's not so much about their individual 1v1 matchup, it's about getting out of this lane and affecting one of the side lanes. I think that's pretty good for Froggen here on the Lissandra. When he has access to the level 6, he can make a very big impact in one of these side lane plays. Plus, he has the safety if CLG decide to try and attack mid. Meanwhile, Wiggly also got off a blue buff steal here, so he's first to level 6 for the junglers. Uh, and he's going to finish up on the bottom half of the map while Contracts is looking for another gank. Froggen would like to set it up. PoE is going to get rooted up there. There's the ulti there foe in. Contract should have found the tag, and that's a kill he absolutely deserves. If you keep looking, you'll eventually find one. The little Lissandra lane is a great place to look. Uh, Ooh, meanwhile, Haunter. top side. Big chunk of damage there onto Ruin, but with Ken and ulti up, Haunter does not want to commit to a potential 1v1 or 1v2 if the jungle is nearby. Oof, yeah, Ruin right into the sweet spot there of the Q. Contracts now. Mid, he is just chain ganking. Here we go. Level six as well. Contract's gonna try and set it up, but Biofrost shuts that down. Who he dead? Yep, he's gonna be the casualty there under the tower as Wiggly was there first with the Jarvin. Sticking around, I don't know if they're gonna make an offensive play here. Biofrost kind of fishing for a little bit of action though. Tries for something here, but not a huge cost for the Thresh as FBI will just pick up. The minions here under the turret. Has gone Sheen first here on Ezreal, so certainly wanting some more offensive power, continuing the run of aggression that this 2v2 has shown for Golden Guardian so far. But uh, Huhi, uninformed for that little timing of aggression, does get himself punished by Biofrost. Hunter on the top side, caught right back up in CS, by the way, after all of that action. And has a nice control wood for himself to even keep himself safe from the roams. A lot of pings going down mid. It looks like they want to attack Froggen. There's no ultimate on the Lissandra. This could be a counter kill. Froggen forced to get out of there early. Does actually short the claw and then Protobelt to get max distance. So nice one there for Froggen to escape. Does not have to use the flash. Yeah, very good job breaking that chain there. That was what they were worried about. Doesn't have to use a summoner spell. So very good escape here for Froggen. And mid lane has definitely been going their way. He had a really nice setup, by the way, for the gank. When Power Vivo walked up to the wave to try and last hit that last minion, Froggen was able to start the entire gank off with the W root. Meanwhile, might be a 3v2. Nice intuition from Contracts, maybe still cost him his life. The hope from Bio is true. And that's Power Vivo gonna grab the kill. Now Froggen under attack is who he roams up to protect him. Yep, Contracts gonna pay the price for that control ward right there. Biofrost is able to defend the vision, landing the hook onto Contracts, even as he gets hit with the Sonic Wave, securing a 100% kill there for CLG. And that one goes right back into the hands of Power of Evil. So the LeBlanc getting a little bit more AP boost here could be very big because that mid lane had been going all Froggen's way. Bottom lane now kind of under attack. Wiggly's doing some counter jungling. FBI looks like he wanted to clear the wave there with the True Shot Barrage because Biofrost and Wiggly starting to pair up now and really get the rooms going. Success there in mid kill contracts. But uh, no dive here as Golden Guardians will see the ward and be able to sweep that out for a bit of added tower dive protection. Frogan also going to be able to get off another wave push into the tower. Mid lane already one turret plate down, but also such a big CS lead for himself. Proto Belt was completed much earlier on. We saw that in the escape from the attempted jungle gank earlier. And his ult is back and available. So I'd expect Golden Guardians to try and make a play off of Froggen's ult with this Lissandra. Lissandra with flash and ultimate available has so much capability. Let's see if uh, Contracts joins once again. Try and take advantage of that. Also have six teleports in this game and they're all about to come back <laughs> off cooldown. So certainly- Where's uh, the party gonna be? <laughs> exactly. Certainly uh, invitations have not been sent out, but party could spawn at any moment. As Riftchild being started by CLG, Wiggly should be able to pick that one up as PoE. Nice bit of poke there onto Frog and Frocking Electrocute, but mostly covering for his jungler as Wiggly does take the Herald and has two minutes to cash in on those plates. All right. Contracts was just hovering mid once again and they're going for a duo invade. 
with Froggen on the red buff. Biofrost is going to find it out, though. He catches him. Nice play into the hook there. Box going to go up. No, Biofrost is waiting it out. Contracts with a fancy flash over the wall. Wants to go back to the red. He's oh. and is able to take it down. And then who with the assist on the Blasco. It's going to leave Froggen in a bit of a pickle. Pops his ulti, but four members of CLG surround him. Uninvited he was, and Froggen will fall eventually. Stixie able to grab the last hit. When invades go wrong, pastry time, that one was so dangerous for Golden Guardians and CLG all to sweep back out to clean their own territory here. They pick up the straggler kill on Froggen, who is trying to lend some support in the invade, and with the mid laner down, that leaves the turret wide open. Oh! That was going to be almost all of the turret. They took two turret plates by themselves, then Shelly finishes off two more, and that is a huge cash in on that counter kill. Big punish from CLG. Yeah, not able to get the turret itself, but so much damage done to mid. Shouldn't be too much longer to take that one down, and CLG pad that gold lead up to about 1,500 as Contract trying to get some sort of consolation prize has landed on the Ocean Drake for now. But TP down here from Stixa back to the bot lane. He does have Essence Reaper now completed. But I don't think the rest of CLG will be here to contest for this Drake. This is a really good answer from the Golden Guardian. CLG need to reset after that last push on mid lane. So at least for the Golden Guardian's sake, I think Ocean Drake very powerful as far as uh, the early answer that they can pick up here. Now they're trying to make a pass at Power of Evil, but Lil Blanc should be safe. Nice Mimic Chain there onto FBI. Gonna dive back in with a distortion. Biofrost with a hook from nowhere as Wiggly seals the deal on that kill. CLG will get FBI and they'll take the turret as well. And Haunts it's not though. done! Solar kill time. Haunts are lining it up. Does not have the Q ready and already burnt his flash. So Ruin will live to tell the tale. Ooh, yeah, he's gonna have to scuttle out of there oh, quick. Oh, maybe not. Contracts. No, don't slow yourself down. Contracts gonna force the flash over the wall. He goes, gonna miss the Q though. Contracts gonna flip over with the blast cone, but that's Ruin out of there. Oh, Ruin is able to escape in the end. He's actually gonna take a cheeky quick recall there. Contracts won't keep up the chase. And that is gonna be the end to the action. But the CLG roaming death squad there, led by Biofrost. Wiggly and Biofrost working really well together so far. Biofrost found another kill towards the mid lane there when they got the pick off. And this has been the cause of CLG's pressure. Biofrost constantly finding these roams and finding the answers. Power people kind of baiting them in here. As you see on the mini map, all of CLG, they head up over these wards straight to the mid lane. Biofrost landing the hook there is able to get the kill onto FBI. That finishes the objective. That opens up the map for them, taking down both mid and bottom turrets. And while the plates may look even, it's the two turrets to zero and the kills that CLG have that are really building up that gold lead. Almost 3,500 ahead as Hornster looks to cut that down a little. This is the success story for Golden Guardians, his top side for Hanser. You know, he's not only got back in CS, but he's actually overtaken Ruin. And we saw previously him chasing him off at the tower in the 1v1. Hanser definitely doing well fending for himself. But Golden Guardians are going to have to bring together some sort of team play here because they have been lacking in the invades and the coordination in those skirmishes. We are looking for another play off of Frog and Zolt, but they've been too spread out to actually make that coordinated play, and they never got it to happen. Well, again, have enough CC and TPs to get something started. It's just a matter of getting there at the right time. Biofrost roaming up towards the top side, though, as CLG will swap top and look to take down that turret. Wiggly also up here. FBI roaming up. Contracts here. It's a 3v3 right now. Who are we actually going to make it uneven? Maybe a big recovery in the coming. Pops the quickness, goes to the back line, but sticks it with a massive Featherstorm. Able to dodge that first little part. Now going to get the root in onto Huyu. Dances back to the team and will get out safely. It's a big party starting up on the top side as Wiggly looking to fall, but Six they already took down Froggen, who did ult himself but couldn't do enough. And there's a kill on the other side as well as Power of Evil able to find the snipe. But they're still going though. Contracts looks to dip back onto Biofrost as Honsa tries to find the knocker but can't quite grab a chain onto Contract. We'll get another kill of CLG. Dance around all of Golden Guardian CC and find three clean kills. Every time Power of Evil shows his face again, they find another kill and he's still looking. Honsa's on the run and FBI left all alone. Yep, enough targeted damage there for Power of Evil to take down the Ezio Contract out of the way of those. And CLG gonna get the third turret to top it all off. Almost 5k ahead. This is game zooms to a lead. Yep, that's going to be the last of the outer turrets for the Golden Guardians going down as CLG get three more kills off of the delayed play here. Ruin wraps around. On to Haunter again. Haunter no ulti, not going to matter even if you really had it. Ruin going to look for the solo kill and does collect it.
CLG just picking up so many of these straggler kills pastry time. They are not letting the play end and no reset for the Golden Guardians. The start for Golden Guardians looks like it was going to be good. You see that teleport on the minimap as well. That is Froggen. So that is five members of the Golden Guardians trying to coordinate for this play. But they mistime it. Hoogie goes in very early on the Rakan. They don't burst anyone down. And he sustains so much damage, he's basically out of the fight. Then Froggen goes in, offensively uses the Lissandra ult. So he has nothing left for safety to keep himself alive afterwards. And Power of Evil then finishes up that kill. They snipe down Hoogie, who stuck around with too low life. Bilefrost barely got that play off, <laughs> but is able to defend himself. And Power of Evil snares up contracts for the follow-up kill here. They also got the extra flash blown. And as you know, that wasn't even the end of the story. Ruin finds the chase down kill on a Haunter after Power of Evil found the chase down kill on FBI. Yeah, I think almost a delayed ace there for CLG, but 10 kills to three and a big hunk of gold to, to speak for it. As Golden Guardian still trying to find a foothold here in the game, have not taken a turret, have only got three kills and an ocean to their name. There is a Drake spawning in 15 seconds, but Felt like all of the places where Golden Guardians had an advantage have now been lost thanks to CLG's good offensive play. All right, next step for them uh, should be to secure this dragon. Mountain Drake, very easy, coming up in three seconds here. Uh, they have plenty of power. With everyone going back to purchase off that, we even have a Medjai's upgrade for Power of Evil. He's got the Soul Stealer ready on LeBlanc, feeling very, very confident after those last couple of kills. So CLG are able to leave some wards through the Golden Guardian's jungle, as well as take the objective for themselves without giving up any sort of territory on the map. And we've talked so much about team play being critical here in the mid game. Oh, as we speak of who he's gonna dive in, Bifrost with the great box into double play. He's gonna leave who he's stranded, perhaps. Quickly gonna find the dunk, but I think he's left for dead. Ruin able to kill who he is. Froggen goes invulnerable into his own ult. He is Ruin gonna try and turn it back around. He finds the double, make it three. And the Thunder falls as well. FBI sniped by Power of Evil at the end of it all. As Haunter is trying to find out of a 1v4, but his ult is down. He does get the kill, but that's an ace for CLG. Oh, he finds he finds the chase down kill there in the dragon pit. Stixa not able to get out of the arena. But in the end, it is a wash here for CLG. What a scattered team fight. It is Golden Gardens who started out with both Froggen and Huhi targeting Stixa. So that was where the flash was blown. Uh, nice little route there onto Huhi, and they immediately kill Huhi. Froggen then is able to play frontline here, self ulting with the Lissandra, healing back up a little bit. He had Ignite on him, so it wasn't that much though, and ruins AoE, absolutely destroys them. He's able to get out to safety. Then Stixay gets out of range of Hunter for a second, but the rest of CLG kind of back off, and Hunter, still eyes on the prize, does finally take one down with him. And he's able to get that extra kill. That is. It was kind of the hope early on for Golden Guardians was Hauntzer. I think that's still the case here, is the Aatrox, as he's been able to scrape together a couple of the kills for the squad. But this game is quickly falling out of reach for the Golden Guardians. CLG have so much extra gold that it's already forming in multiple completed items as an advantage for multiple members of CLG, and that's going to be very difficult for them to overcome. Even Hunter himself now under attack. Yeah, Power of Evil are going to stack the Medias up even further. Nice pullback on the chain. Does actually move PoE back, but Hunter going to have to juke. Can't juke that Q, though, as PoE still chasing. Pops the world in there for a bit of extra speed out of there. But Power of Evil happy with that result. Yep. LeBlanc with double buffs and a six kill. 18-page stacked Medjai Soul Stealer. That is going to be very dangerous. The only answer there is really going to be a Golden Guardian setup where they have Froggen point and click CC Power of Evil when he goes in for the poke. You have to use that Lissandra CC on this LeBlanc. You have to cut down on those Medjai pages by getting that single kill or else he will continue to just attack your side lanes, uh, leave no real safe area for Golden Guardians to push out minions. You can see Froggen doing what he can there in the top lane. Haunts are continually assaulted by the Big LeBlanc means that he can't really leverage his advantage either. And CLG not really slowing the game down much at all. Gonna get a ward down, zone them off and make them walk the long way back around this tier two turret while Power of Evil just zips between the lanes. I mean, when you have this much strength and this much mobility and the map is this open, LeBlanc is just a terror to try and play against. Yeah, and I don't. it doesn't look like CLG have any intention of slowing down the game. 
especially Ruin here. I like that he's gone for the Spellbinder rather than much more uh, safe uh, Zonia's type options, which we see for getting. You'll flash in for your uh, immunities for the team fights. He's looking for those big kills. The extra speed and ability power afforded by the Spellbinder makes those cannon ultimates huge. Vile is dead, That's though. a pick. Frogan finally able to use that ulti to get a kill, but still still G gonna go in. The Chomp still latches on a Wiggler. He gets kicked around by Contract. Knock up there from Huhi. Golden Guardians may have found a few picks here. Haunter gonna look to take down Ruin Solo as they do manage to slay Wiggly. All of a sudden, it's a 3v5 as CLG misstep. Huge misplay from CLG there. Biofrost walks in, gets annihilated immediately. Then they don't give up on the play, and it's another re-engage. Golden Guardians punish them in a big way, and they are on Baron. Well, Ruin doesn't have ulti, and he's actually went back to base, so now it's 2v5 in the Baron pit for CLG, but it is the two big carries in 6A and Power of Evil. The chain's gonna hit onto 6A. That'll force the Feather Storm out. Golden Guardians taking back spikes damage there from the Baron, but they're trying to desperately make sure they get a contract. Able to find the smite. Froggen dips on the POE with the root, but he goes into stasis. Now forced to flash. Q's gonna oh. miss. He'll get out. The clone comes back and Power of Evil gets out, but Golden Guardians do get the Baron. The Golden Guardians are able to make the clutch outplays here as CLG just charge headlong into them through this brush. Nobody's close to Biofrost, and Froggen doesn't hesitate. Really good decision-making there. He doesn't let Biofrost throw the Lantern back. They just CC Biofrost from, you know, 100% to 10% HP. And then Wiggly follows him in after Bao's already dead, so he gets focused down. Stixay and Power of Evil don't get any damage off during this time. Meanwhile, Ruin had teleported in to the mid lane there, uh, and, Ru and Hunter had immediately answered, so everything's swinging back in their favor. Biofrost now does get a hook onto Hunter, but Looks like it's going to be no engage, and they will just walk away with the Ocean Drake. Golden Guardian still trying to make a few trades here. FBI about to kite himself into a cannon, though. Getting poked down. Contracts found Ruin. They're going to kick him back, and that's a shutdown. Golden Guardians continue to find picks as Biofrost may be too far forward again. Haunta finds a pullback in the chain, and he gets a kill as Froggen has TP'd in. Golden Guardian still keeping up the pace. I mean, that is a cannon in the brush, but we talked about it. He's Spellbinder. This is full offense cannon. There is no... Zonia's for delay for the rest of the team. So he gets immediately taken down and the Golden Guardians just like that are taking inhibitors. Yeah, Golden Guardians have shredded that gold lead to ribbons as they'll crack through mid, take down the turret, take down the inhib as well. Death time is still short, Ruin back up in 10 seconds. So Golden Guardians will have to retreat, but already the Baron doing so much work. Well then. That is such a big swing. I have not seen a big swing like this in that short of a time span in a long time. Hear it again. This is all of Golden Guardians. It seemed like they had an idea that Ruin was there. Everybody waited, contracts with the ward in there. So maybe if we took a replay maybe further back, we could see how they saw him leading up to that area. But that is a case of Golden Guardians having some advanced knowledge of Ru Ruin just being in that area and possibly being in that brush. Maybe something timed out um, or something that led up to it. But look at this gold lead. The roller coaster. 7.8K at one point, back down to even. All right, well, Baron's still ticking away for 50 seconds. So we'll see if Golden Guardians can get any more structures. But they basically put the game back to even and could do even more damage if they can continue to find picks. Froggen again looks for PoE, who dashes out of the way with the W. Pressure still not off now for CLG. A stick say tied up in mid lane, having to take the super minions out. I don't know if CLG can defend this tier two. Haunts are looking around. Ruin again, trying to find a flank. All right, they've got one more minion wave to work with. 30 seconds of Baron. They finish up the bottom tower. And the Golden Guardians have super minions in mid as well. To complement their pressure on bottom side, they can keep pushing here. I like the control woods as well. Ruin is sitting on one of his own. But Golden Guardians trying to make sure they can spot this cannon. I think they feel that's the only way things can really go wrong. And Haunts has found Ruin, but Ruin strikes first. Haunts is taking a little too much damage. Power of Evil looks for the snipe, but doesn't connect the chain. Tower almost destroyed by those barred up cannon minions. And the FBI will finish the job here. Oh, One more. On. Gets it. Contract finds the kick on Wiggly. Wants to deny the engage. 
Hook there from Bio, frogging over the top, maybe too far forward under Bio, Frosty goes, does have his ulti, forced to go into stasis, Wiggly tries to find the Cataclysm, goes in as Ruin, kind of kept out of the fight, but they take down Hui, still needs to keep the carries alive as FBI and Contracts still standing alongside Frog and Power of Evil though, could find so many picks here, Haunter has found the reset, but the ulti is running out. Yeah, Golden Guardian's going to disengage there, it looks like their job is done. They got mid inhibitor, bottom inhibitor turret. So that bottom inhibitor will remain exposed and so much damage done in the aftermath of that Baron. Very successful last 10 minutes here for the Golden Guardians, completely surging back into this game. Let's take another look at how it all started out. As you mentioned, Ruin on the control board on top side. Hunter ends up walking right into it. Uh, Ruin in that 1v1. Didn't want to use everything he had. He could have popped the ultimate, maybe, uh, and went for the burst down on Hanser. Maybe you get the stun and it, it sets up Power of Evil and they take one out of the fight. But it seems like maybe he wanted to keep the AoE for the team fight. Uh, we'll take a look at how that actually does come in because Froggen takes the claw as Balfrost landed that hook. And this time he's got zone he's got Zonia's as well as his ultimate to buy a lot of time. Rune eventually does get a big AoE ultimate uh, and is able to survive long enough to put, do a decent amount of damage, but him going down gives Hunter that reset. And Hunter can then play bodyguard for the rest of the Golden Guardians to get them out alive. Well, Golden Guardians a pretty massive Baron Power play to again kick the game back to about even. Still he's still up about 1200 gold, but given the position they were in before. Can't be too happy about this turn of events as Golden Guardians looking to keep that super minion pressure on in mid lane. Bruin is busy tackling the creeps in the bottom half of the map because there is an exposed inhibitor there as well. And with Baron respawning probably not too much longer and another Drake on the table in 20 seconds. Game is going to be very explosive. One fight could decide things in a pretty swift manner. Yeah, CLG currently with control over the dragon that's about to spawn. It's just another Ocean Drake, so not huge value for them, but they would like to deny it from the Golden Guardians. Problem is, the Golden Guardians have control wards all over the Baron area and with mid inhibitor down. That means they've got pressure with the super minions. So CLG, I don't know if they can spend any time to go pick up that dragon because they constantly have to be worried about this Baron being forced. Ruin did actually get a wave pushed all the way to the bottom inhibitor turret, but he's forced back because I think they know that Baron is oh, the thing I that Golden Guardians are thinking of. Yeah, Golden Guardians have started the Baron, but CLG are walking very slowly in the area. Finally now they'll use the blue trinket to get some vision. Froggen tried to find a sneaky little pick off, but he's going to be forced away by Stixay. They kick the jungler away, they're looking to get the Baron, but Wiggly can't take it. Contract able to find the smite, but now the redemption down as Golden Guardians need to win the other end of the fight. A massive true shot for Rogers. Froggen plays frontline there, ulting himself with a big Featherstorm. Almost takes down a few more from GGS. They'll keep chasing in though, Froggen looking for that pick, but no one down just yet. Haunter over the top, looks for Biofrost, doesn't get it, but FBI able to find the snipe on the Stixay and get that kill for the side as Haunter back towards the team as Power of Evil almost takes down the Aatrox at FBI in there. He wants to try and get down PoE, but PoE splits into his passive. Contract still chasing. That's the shutdown. FBI finds it. And Golden Guardian still in the lead. Yep, they've got Baron Bust, so they're going to run straight down mid lane. Double teleports will come in. Triple teleports will come in. Everybody healing at the fountain. And they're going to make this push. The last one. 35 seconds left on Power of Evil. 20 on Sticks. Hey, can they do it? Golden Guardian's effectively going all in to try and take down this next. Mid inhibitor falls. Those timers still ticking down. 6A will be up in a few seconds, but the Nexus Taurus may not survive the pressure. Froggen in, gets the ulti down. That's Ruin dead before he can use any of his cooldowns. Not that he had many left to speak of. Biofrost dead. That's a wrench from earlier as FBI is racking up kills everywhere. Haunts up, procs the passive. Stixa is dead, and the Nexus will be exposed by the Golden Guardian, who battled back to take down CLG, diving into the fountain and taking down the Nexus. The Golden Guardians. Big punish there on some mistakes from CLG in quick succession. Picking up the kills into the Baron, immediately pushing for multiple objectives. And actually still quickly finishing out that game, only 31 minutes after being down 7.8K gold in the early game. I think uh, highlighting the importance of sticking to your plan. 
because Golden Guardians didn't change what they had to do. They had a bunch of good CC tools. They needed to coordinate and try and find a few stragglers. And despite the gold difference being significantly in favor for CLG, they still did it. Frog and Found picks for the ulti. And it seems like as soon as Golden Guardians started to pick up some momentum, managed to roll down the hill very swiftly. <laughs> yeah, that decision making. I mean, a lot of people in, in some of those cases, like uh, the one where Froggen gets the initial pick onto Biofrost, would be hesitant to use their ultimate on just a Thresh, you know, support pick, but they use it, they completely burst him down. They use that numbers advantage to then chain into another kill, and that leads to a really big domino effect of them getting objective after objective. Uh, so be liberal with your ultimates <laughs> when you're in dire situations like this. You know, you're down that much gold. You have to take the opportunities that are given to you. And really good job of Golden Guardians capitalizing on that. And I think, again, how quickly they made those decisions to take the Baron to just end the game. Certainly impressive stuff. But we are going to send it down now to Riv, who is standing by with the Golden Guardians bot laner. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Great cast on the day. I am joined by FBI. Have Golden Guardians take down Counter Logic Gaming in a really back and forth matchup. At one point, GGS was down 8,000 gold for that comeback. What were the communications going on in the Rift for the team? Um, I just think it was about staying calm. Like, we knew we were really far behind, but we had a really good team fight comp, I feel. So, I think it was just about um, finding our windows. And um, I think the experienced players on the team really helped find them. And kind of with all those experienced players, you get to join this LCS team now from Academy. What kind of voice are you bringing to the team? Or are you kind of just feeling safe with falling in line with all the calls? Yeah, honestly, I'm like currently finding it hard to find my place in the team, I think. I think um, generally I like speak out a lot, but uh, I'm kind of taking a back step on this team. Obviously, we have a frog and um, corn star, so I'm just kind of taking a back step and trying to find my place in the team. And yeah. Well, everything seems to be working out and the lanes are sliding into. Final question from Academy to LCS. Golden Guardians now sits in a playoff position. Kind of how has the road felt for you and what do you absolutely want to show everybody this season? Um, I think the road for me has been pretty hard. I think I've been finding it hard to find my confidence on stage. I think um, I play really differently in scrims than I do on stage. So I'm going to just keep working hard and hopefully I can find my form. Awesome, FBI, thank you so much. Congrats on the win. Golden Guardians coming up with another one. We're gonna throw it to the analyst desk to break that down. Thank you very much, Riv. Golden Guardians coming out with a victory here, a much needed one, as in recent weeks, their record has not been wildly impressive. But as it is a mid lane focused day, we have the tier list at the top where we stack ranked them all, and we have two expert mid laners on our desk. I kind of want to take a look at the mid lane matchup within this game uh, and, and really dive into it uh, and look at how it ultimately affected the end result. I mean, the way that we got here was interesting because CLG on blue side last bans the Corky and Azir, and those are some things on blue side you might want to think about blind picking, potentially, especially into Froggen. So they ban both of those, and then blind pick the LeBlanc, which sounds like they were setting up and actually wanted this. Yeah, I mean, LeBlanc is sort of an execution test kind of champion. You need to know how to play him well, or play her well. And in my opinion, it didn't look like a super good LeBlanc game, because if you're ahead, then yes, you're going to do really well like he was doing. But the second you go even or behind, you're completely useless. All right, landing yeah. stats right there, down almost 20 at 10 in terms of CSD. Did pick up a kill before that 10-minute mark. But that's where things kind of started to shift. And I want to identify for CLG how it was that they ultimately were able to move Power of Evil out of the mid lane and start making moves around the map. Yeah, I think Power of Evil did a really good job out of lane in the, in the mid game to like snowball himself ahead and, and pick up kills. Um, I, I think Froggen like, had a pretty ideal like first 10 minutes of the game. You saw the CS differential in the mid lane, they were looking for plays, but it was really a story of Power of Evil grouping up with his teammates and getting kills, and he was in the position to carry the game. You saw he had a 20 stack Magi's. Um, he really did a good job, I would say, in the mid game. And Le LeBlanc does scale really well. Um, it basically becomes a poke assassin where you have a lot of options, and you have so much agency in the game. Uh, and and, and in, the, in the early mid game, Parvio did a really good job of uh, utilizing that. But I, All right, I so feel we like get ourselves to that four-one-four state. I, yeah, it's the yeah. scoreline that jumps out in my mind. But but for you then, Golden Glue, at, at that moment in the game, I, I I now give you control over yeah. over the PC. What are you calling? What is the way we need to play it out to get the win? I think as you actually saw him do it once in the game when LeBlanc went to the side lane and versus Aatrox. Aatrox had absolutely nothing he could do. He got poked out, like got cut, chunked to 40%. Then they seized the turret, got damage on the turret. You just need to keep repeating that, like rinse and repeat. But what they did instead was they grouped up mid and opted into just like trying to team fight 4v4, 
I think Thresh walks in and just like dies of Lissandra. And it's really hard to just like start a fight as LeBlanc. Because if you get Lissandra ulted, you die. You, you straight die. So you need to be coming from the side, pressuring someone out, and then you have a flank. Let the fight start, and then you clean it up. But he was there trying to like start fights, which isn't really ideal for LeBlanc. You kind of want to pull Lissandra away from the fight because, like you said, if she's there at the beginning of the fight, you can't go in because you're going to die instantly. So, like, ideally, you want LeBlanc to sort of go top, kind of push Lissandra to show top wave, and then you can kind of flank mid, get a good angle, and yeah. go for the engage. Yeah. I think to some degree this speaks, uh, you know, to the teams and the styles that they're used to playing, or at least the styles that they have refined. Because we'll, I'll note that while we were watching the game, both of you commented, you know, the idea that, these mid laners are playing these champions like control mages, uh, even, yeah. even just now. And so the, the play on the champions doesn't necessarily align with the win conditions of the champion. All that said, Power of Evil can play as well as he wants, but if Biofrost is going to run face first into a bush that he knows yeah. he shouldn't, then all of this goes out the window, and it doesn't matter how you're mechanically playing on your mid lane champion. Yeah, I mean, that was really the throw of the game, where you just literally, you had a pink ward there, you know everyone's there, and you just run into four people because you're ahead of the play. They had Ken and TP flanking at the same time, so they have what's a nice idea that never gets together just because they're so far ahead of the play. And then from this point, it's like, yeah, like they're saying, you know, you're... Support's already dead. Lissandra's sitting there right next to her entire team. So even if her ult's down, she can still just tap W, w. And, and stop you from going in. So there's not much LeBlanc can do. And then from that point onwards, it was almost entirely team fight situations because they lost the Baron after that. Yeah. And now Golden Guardians is like, well, we're never going to split up the whole rest of the game. Yeah. Right, we're going to force you to come match us or meet us down at your inhib turret. This disallows the LeBlanc to get into the side lanes. And I kind of want to return again then to that, that stylistic point and ask the question, like, should, should should CLG be playing LeBlanc? If, if ultimately Power of Evil is better on, one, he is better on Control Mages, two, CLG has shown us throughout the course of this split that they can tie for first place in the standings by playing more towards that style. We know Ruin loves the Kennens, those, uh, you know, team fight flankers. Do they even really need to open their strategic playbook to uh, a mid lane assassin in LeBlanc? Is that something worth exploring? I, I think it would make more sense on like a red side, like fifth pick. I, if you could see the the champions and made sure like they don't really have much lockdown, it, it seems like Power Vivo at least has pretty good understanding of the champion. He got really strong, really fed, and he can play the champion, obviously. It, was, it just seemed like they're just missing like just a bit more, you know, just like being able to create the right conditions to fight in the mm -hmm. late game. And, like, I would not, like, put LeBlanc out of the playbook right now from that game. I would say, like, yo, we need to review this game. Like, figure out how we can get the conditions. Send LeBlanc to side lane. Maybe you fifth pick it on red so you see they don't have a Lissandra mid lane. That kind of, like, makes it hard for you to actually do much. Um, but LeBlanc overall, I would say, looked pretty good that game. I also want to say that teams generally don't want to only play one style. And if your player can only play, like, scaling late game mid champions, that really hinders your ability to draft. Mm -hmm. So in my opinion, I like the idea that they're going for, you know, this different kind of style pick for PoE. I think, you know, like Grayson said, like maybe picking last pick red side when it's a little better situation for it, where you have more of a ganking jungler that can help sort of in the mid game, because Jarvan's good level two, but not super good after that at ganking mid. So uh, I think in that sense, it does make sense, especially from CLG's point of view, they're not just going to, you know, win this game or get third. They want to win the entire LCS. So to do that, you need to have multiple ways of playing. I like the point of clarity, too, around that, that, that from this game, you don't discount the LeBlanc performance. Uh, Power of Evil can clearly play the champion. There is still maybe some work to be done about where and when to pick it and how to pilot it as a whole. Uh, one final point that I want to kind of touch on is, is the idea of ease of execution around champions. And I know when we're looking at this mid lane matchup again, you got Lissandra on one side, LeBlanc on the other. In these late game situations, one is easier than the other when it comes to the decision tree of how you might approach these fights. And that is showcased in the final fight of the game. Yeah, there's definitely a level of confidence when you know the exact combo you want to do and you don't really have to vary, like have much variation. Uh, LeBlanc has an extreme amount of variation in what you can do. So you're, you're constantly thinking about all the options you can have. While Lissandra is very straightforward. It's like, you know what you want to do. You're going to go in, you're going to ult someone or you're going to ult yourself and you're going to design. You're going to make a lot of time for your team. Um, and I think it really paid off for GGS this game. They were able to just do what's known, what's easy, what's, I guess, safe, and it paid off. Yeah, I mean, right there, you have LeBlanc on the backside of the pit trying to hop in while comboing people, while knowing they have to get back out, whereas Lissandra just eat in. <laughs> eat into a cannon ult. Ult. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. eat in, self ulted, and like bought enough space for him to get the Baron and get out. It's right. so much easier. And even when Froggen was making mistakes in team fights, like the one near the bot inhibitor, where he goes in so far ahead of the rest of his team, Lissandra is just like, 
naturally tanky with Aftershock, plus you have your Zanyas and your Ultimate. Like, you buy so much time that your team can react to, to you maybe making a slight mistake. All yeah. right, well, with that, of course, uh, uh, Golden Guardians picks up the victory. We are going to say goodbye to Golden Glue and Blaze Off, so I want to thank you for joining us before uh, we ship out, though, as we had them do the mid lane tier list. I just want to know from each of you who is the best mid laner in the LCS right now, not yourselves. First Golden Glue. <laughs> um... I think I'm gonna go with Jensen right now. I think Jensen is playing really well, really solid, and it seems like he can play a lot of different champions. And yeah, I think he's just really good. Plays off. I have to go with Bjergsen. I think uh, he's just so versatile. He can play every single style, has insane work ethic. Like, basically, there's virtually nothing you can say that's really bad against him. Yeah. Especially since coming from sort of the TSM side, I know more about mm. kind of his intentions than mm. other people do. And I think he gets hit a lot harder than he really should be. That insider knowledge. Well, thank you guys very much for joining us. Appreciate all of your insight. We're stepping away when we return. 100 Thieves look to take down Echo Fox. Meet us back here for game four after this. No ulties here. TP already getting used by CLG. Sticks in trouble. Contract getting locked up for a while, but the first blood over the frog. A little block should be saved. Nice mimic chain there. Onto FBI. Gonna die back in with a distortion. Biofrost with a hook from nowhere as Wiggly seals the deal on that kill. Lissandra, no, 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 no. Top flash. Yeah, we, we can win. No, here, A-Trot, A-Trot, A-Trot. I could rock it, I could rock it, I could rock it. I'm okay, I'm okay. Slowly, slowly, guys. Hunter's on the run, and FBI left all alone. Yep, Ruin able to kill who he is. Frogger goes invulnerable into his own ulti. Is Ruin going to try and turn it back around? He finds the double, make it three. And the Sandra falls as well, and that's Ruin dead before he can use any of his cooldowns. Not that he had many left to speak of. Firefrost dead. That's a red from earlier as FBI is racking up kills everywhere. Haunts up, procs the passive. Stixay is dead. Welcome back to Assist of the Week, presented by State Farm. Things were looking a little grim for the Sonoteric bot lane of Team Liquid as they faced off against 100 Thieves on Sunday. 100 Thieves saw an opportunity to dive and Core JJ was the first target. Double lift still alive, sticks close to 100 Thieves' exit, knowing Xmithy is just around the corner. As soon as 100 Thieves try to make their getaway, Xmithy greets them with Jarvan's Cataclysm, and Team Liquid clean up the resulting fight with a triple kill for Doublelift. 